Okay, I can't shoot Tabitha. She said she didn't put any makeup on today. So I'm only allowed to shoot her back. Hmm. Those will be some really great shots. Anyway, I'm gonna go up there. Right up. Looks like a shelter. Maybe an ancient shelter up there. We'll find out. What a stunning day. Let's find out. I made it to the top about three quarters of the way up. I thought to myself, eh, I don't think so. These people weren't dumb. They didn't climb to the top of cliff faces just because it was cool. They were very pragmatic. So maybe they might have come up this far for shelter, for defense, or who knows what, but they're not going out of their way to like, oh, there's a cool cave up on top of that cliff. Let's go up there. Uh-uh, no way. It takes calories, takes energy, and they weren't stupid. So anyway, it's beautiful up here as hell. It's gorgeous and a gorgeous day. So it was worth it. But yeah, no sign of any ancient people. So it's worth a try though. So as it turns out, I was wrong. Look at these guys. These are stacked. There's actually a row of these guys. So there was some kind of shelter created that was man-made probably a very, very, very long time ago. So it looks like this actually is an ancient shelter. I'm not seeing any soot on top of the ceiling here. So pretty good chance that this wasn't used much. Uh, if there was used a lot, you'd see a lot of black soot and a lot of charcoal on the ground, but there's none of that here. So probably a quick temporary kind of a thing. So we've been walking for many, 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 many miles, long ways, and we found this big outcrop in the middle of nowhere, and I thought, well, let's go take a look at that. That could be interesting, and we found a site. This is probably an undocumented ancient Native American uh, petroglyph site, so here it is. There was also something here that has long since faded here and here. So this was a pretty good sized panel, but most of it unfortunately has uh, faded away. So I'm gonna scramble around these rocks and see if I can find some more. All right, I'm back in my post-production suite, and this is the image I created when I was out at this magnificent site. So I walked around the corner, and as you know, found this magnificent petroglyph right here. And I want to point out that uh, later in the day, the uh, weather changed. A cell came in right as the sun was dropping, and this magnificent orange glow just attacked. There was a dust storm happening over here. And these rocks really, look at this, these rocks just became golden. They started to really glow. I thought that was really a cool touch to it. Here again are the uh, stack stones that were no doubt an ancient uh, people's hunting hide. They would hide behind this. The, this wash, this arroyo over here is probably the route by which these uh, bighorn sheep were cruising down to get to the wash. Around the corner over here there's a big spring area and I'm pretty convinced that that's where they were. The animals are getting their water and these ancient peoples knew exactly where to go. Little side note on this because this is kind of a little frustrating point that I have when it comes to um, anthropologists and archaeologists. You know, I think that a lot of them sort of come from this ethnocentric point of view, which is really, really sad because they always talk about how uh, these ancient people struggled every day and it was such an intense thing. And that if they didn't, they didn't kill food and gather food every single day, they were going to die and life was so hard. And I think that that's a very pathetic attitude. And I think it's bullshit, frankly. And the reason I think it's bullshit is because these people came from the womb into this world and lived it every single day. These people knew exactly how to hunt. They knew exactly how to find food. They knew exactly how to find shelter and to take care of themselves and clothe themselves and protect themselves from the elements. 
And I think it's sick when um, modern folks say, oh, it was such a hard life, such a hard life. Well, to them, this is the only life they knew and they were brilliant at it. They were beautiful at it. And if they were no good at it and every day was such an intense struggle and every day was so important to their survival, then when the uh, Western culture arrived on the North American continent and encroached upon the world of these people. There wouldn't have been any of them left. They would have been gone. They would have been dead. They wouldn't have survived. But no, when the Western folks arrived here, there were millions of these people and there were actual civilizations happening. They were fantastic. So at any rate, these were magnificent people. Now, another point I want to make about this is, first of all, there's this line across here. Now, what I did in Photoshop, just full disclosure, is I darkened this up and actually colored it to more match up here because I think photographically it would look real much better. It was a little bit of a distraction down here. However, this area was extremely eroded, and it looks to me like it was water erosion. The water, a water line went right up through here, and if you look at this figure here, Clearly, this is where it was faded at the waist from the waist down where this water line is, or what I think is a water line, is exactly where it's faded and eroded. Now, this site is near an ancient dry lake, and this dry lake hasn't had water in it for more than 5,000 years. So this is telling me that this site is potentially more than 5,000 years old because there was water in here at some point in the past, and that's what eroded the lower half. The other thing I want to point out is, is that this is extremely faded at the actual location. So I went in and basically pulled up some of the details and was able to digitally retouch this in such a way that we could see, I think, much more in line with what it actually looked like when the... Um, ancient um, artists created this piece. So I think this is very accurate representation of what, when this was engraved, when this petroglyph was carved into this rock, it probably looked very much like this. Now, of course, we're missing details here more than likely. And over here on the wall, I found some scratches and I'm pretty sure there used to be something up in here, but it's long since faded away. What a magnificent location. What a beautiful piece. I have no idea what this is, but look at this, this, sorry, I just whacked the microphone, but look at this down curved hand right here. And I think it was down curved here. And of course I have no idea what this thing is, a staff, a representation of a lightning strike. Who knows what this thing was, but what a wonderful piece and what a powerful piece. Now, I believe that the this image probably has something to do with the hunt only because we have found hundreds of sites in this region where there are bighorn sheep depicted. I think the hunt was very important. However, we also have found shamanic sites. So sometimes nestled up into, let me go a little wider here, sometimes nestled up into rocks like this, we'll find shamanic sites, shelters, caves, where there are um, signs of uh, a lot of use, a lot of fires over the years, thousands of years. And some of the symbology and the images that we see seem to be very shamanic. Now, I think that that could be the case here. This might be a holy man, a shaman, something of that sort. Maybe it's an entity conjuring rain or conjuring uh, more animals for the hunt. Who knows? We don't know. But it is nevertheless a magnificent piece. And the nice thing about, about it, the fun thing about some of these sites is, is that that sense of curiosity, that sense of not knowing. And I think that sometimes when we really don't know what these things are, it's even even more powerful because there's this mystery. What is this? And this meant something to pe these people. This was important. Look, these people weren't just running around carving on rocks just because. This site had significance. This site had power. It was important to them. Perhaps it was sacred, but but it but it wasn't necessarily personal. It wasn't necessarily, oh, I'm just going to doodle on this rock. I think there's a statement here. Look at the look at the way this is it's such a simple piece. Yet look at the way it's represented on this rock. This was a message. Now, it was probably a message to the tribe or the clan or the group of people that the nomadic hunter-gatherers that were cruising through here, more than likely. But it was still a message to the world, right? And these people physiologically were exactly the same as us. No, they did not have our technology. But I'll tell you what, their 
intelligence, their knowledge was a way of reading the land, reading the environment and surviving. And that's magnificent. It's every bit as powerful as we are just in a very different way way. These people had dreams. They had a belief system. They had a, a, a desire and an urge to live and to, and to manifest and to grow and to propagate in these incredible settings. Now, these settings in this region, in the Great Basin, are some of them um, probably as much as 10, 12, 13, even even, even thousand years old. And even further than that, we know that because we've found ancient, ancient petroglyphs out here that are crazy old. In this case, the actual site, the patina is starting to wear over this really intensely. And so it's no doubt thousands and thousands of years old. Now, again, I've cleaned it up a lot, so it looks much more clear now, but on site, it's very faded. So it takes thousands of years for the patina, the um, outer veneer of this rock to fade back and become at one with the surrounding patina in this rock once again. And like I said before, this is very faded when you're actually on the site. I went in and retouched it in such a way that I brought the details out. But there it is really faded. This is a super old piece. It's haunting. It's like a ghost. It's like a spirit. It's like an entity from the past that just wants to rise and wants to live. And this is one of the reasons why these images for me to produce are so important I think and so powerful because there's going to be a day when this will all remain here and be pretty much as it is but this will be faded this image will be gone forever it's going to happen the weather the elements mother nature will have her way and this is going to be gone and so the fact that I'm able to find these spots to hunt and search and seek them out and then to to photograph them and then rework them in such a way that the message is still there for uh, for for generations and generations is really important to me and it's a very very powerful thing. Think about it. There's a pretty good chance that this image hasn't been photographed before given where we found it. And so we are then able to breathe life back into it and to allow it to continue whatever this message is to continue into you know decades centuries perhaps even millennia into the future and that is powerful that is such a special thing and i'm so grateful to have a lifestyle in which tabitha and i can do this find these places and actually um, go in and preserve uh, digitally and then via prints uh, the prints that are at our, our savageterritory.com we're actually able to um, allow people to purchase those and actually perpetuate whatever this magical sacred place is. So I've called this uh, rising entity panel. I have no idea if it's a, a mythological creature, a human, a holy person, a hunter, uh, an in other world entity, who knows, who knows what it is, but what a mesmerizing piece. On a technical, technical note, this is, uh, I shot this with a 50 megapixel camera. It's in three image stitch, so the file is huge. So when we print this up to 90 inches, actually we can go even wider than 90 inches. We can go up to like eight feet wide with this uh, print and it is stunning. The detail just jumps off this rock. It's fantastic. So super psyched, super stoked uh, to have been able to have this day out there to find this site and to be able to accurately uh, capture it. Now, don't forget to head over to savageterritory.com. Uh, that's where you'll find all these prints. Go into the limited editions. Click on the limited editions, and you will find a little store where we have a lot of these images available. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of images I still haven't even gotten to. I will. It's going to take a lot of years, and we're just going to keep posting these things up and, and uh, uh, putting them on the site so that they're available so that we can continue whatever this magical message is. Thanks. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for getting to the end of my long uh, discourse here. <laughs> my monologue, I guess it would be more accurately. And uh, it's cool and more and more to come. So be sure to check out, you know, savageterritory.com, all the links to the social media there. And you can, you know, subscribe, of course, to the YouTube channels and Vimeo and all that that we have going on. Have a beautiful day. Good thoughts.